not attempt any of the stunts you're about to see. Just when all hope seemed lost, message of a new message to an unknown old great world. Frick, I'm gonna make you here, boys, coming to you live, all the way from the world's tiniest shop. Anyhow, we're gonna do it this way because the lighting the other way is terrible. Anyhow, there was a problem with this transmission I put in, and uh, I made a video, the last video I made, explaining what the problem was with the fluid level, which I will show you in a minute. And I got absolutely roasted by my subscribers, which is totally okay. I don't know everything, you don't know everything, and uh, this channel is not just for other people to learn, it's for me to learn too. Anyhow, today we're going to make a video describing or showing dipstick stops on a 4L60E transmission. And yes, they do exist. As you can see, she's showing way over full. Alright, if you watched my last video where I showed a picture of the valve body of the transmission that's in the van right now, then you know that the dipstick stop is not on that valve body. I also showed you a picture of a 4L60 with a dipstick stop on the valve body. I had originally thought that a rebuilder rebuilt this transmission and forgot to put that in. I've learned something since then. Alright, so this here is the transmission that came out of the van and that there is a dipstick stop. You have your tube that comes through the top of the transmission right there. Your dipstick is inside it and it's limited. It cannot go any further than this. So I thought the rebuilder who rebuilt that transmission forgot that part because it's usually one of the last parts to go into a rebuild but I was wrong if you remember from a few videos ago I bought this new transmission from a wrecking yard that pumps all the fluids out right and they put a hole in the pan and a plug because when you're taking transmissions out in their yard they really don't want fluid everywhere for environmental reasons now if you look right there on this pan from a 2005 the pan that I did not use with the new transmission because of that hole it has a dipstick stop built right into the pan instead of having that bracket on the valve body so that's where I went wrong I never knew that before but now I know and now you do too alright so the first thing I'm going to do is drain that transmission again and that my friends is precisely why I prefer a pan with a drain plug in it because you just never know it really sounds like somebody has a broken horn over there. If you want to see an awesome video of a guy with a broken horn, check the description box below. I will uh, put the video link there. Here's my oil. It looks black, but it's not. It's still good, which is just awesome because it's expensive. It only looks black because it's dark in here. Alright, so the viewers that were roasting me the other night were telling me that this was nothing more than a baffle and I was losing my mind. They are correct, I am losing my mind, but they were only partially right about this being a baffle. It does work like a baffle. If you put your stick down through the tube too hard, you're going to splash up and get an inaccurate reading. But this is actually a stopper. And right now, we can prove that. So if I measure from gasket mating surface down, we have exactly two inches, right? This is going to be really hard to show. It's dark under here. You'll have to take my word for it, I guess. But the dipstick is down almost at three inches. So it's an inch lower than it should be. Oh wow, it's a lot easier to get light in here when I don't have the tape measure in the way. Anyhow, uh, you can see right there, there is absolutely no dipstick stop to prevent that from going down too far. She's down almost three inches when the dipstick stop should be stopping it at two below the gasket mating surface and we will get to that in a minute. Alright before I put the van back together I want to show you both transmission pans side by side. These are both from a 4L60E. This one's from a 2005 model. This one's from a 1999 model. I keep reusing this one because it has a drain plug that's removable which is obviously handy and that one does not. Also you can see clear as day there's a dipstick stop built into this one and the pan I used did not have a dipstick stop which gave me an inaccurate reading on my fluid level now a lot of people were roasting me telling me it's a baffle anyhow I'm gonna grab a 10 millimeter socket remove this here dipstick stop install it on that van right there then I can put the pan back up I'm gonna reuse this one again and now I'll actually have a dipstick stop to show me where my fluid should be there you go she's all cleaned up and ready to be installed I've now installed the dipstick stop and we can see that she bottoms out right there and then you have to push it in and clamp her down. 
And then we can go underneath and see how it works. Ugh. Okay, it's really dark under here. I'm not sure why some shots work and others don't. But anyhow, you can see she's limited. That's the dipstick stop right there, and it is preventing the dipstick from going any further down into the fluid. Woo! I think we're getting a storm coming soon. Anyhow, I have 16 bolts to put the pan back on, and then I can refill it with the right amount of fluid. And it's going to be very interesting to see what it should have compared to what's inside my uh, drain pan. Alright, so I put the transmission pan back on, dumped some fluid into her, and we can see that she's now at the right level. Well that was a whole lot of not much fun. I got it done though and the transmission now has the correct amount of fluid. The thing that sucks is now I can take it for a real test drive, but I've already driven it 10 to 15 uh, miles or 15 to 20 kilometers with not enough fluid and too much fluid. And now if it's damaged, I don't know if it's something I did or if it came from the junkyard that way. Live and learn. Live and learn. Uh, changing the torque converter to a smaller one really threw me off. I don't know how much fluid that thing takes. If I had put the original torque converter back in, I wouldn't have even needed the dipstick. I've done this so many times that I could have just put the correct amount of fluid in and known that I was good. Anyhow, the dipstick stop was missing. Live and learn. Uh, I made a video about it. I think it was my last video. And I got absolutely roasted by some subscribers for saying that a 4L60E transmission had a dipstick stop. Uh, I want you guys to know that I appreciate all comments, even if you're roasting me. Not only did I not delete your comment, because of all the swearing, I had to go and approve it from YouTube Studio so that I could even reply to it. I put a lot of time and effort into the reply. I wasn't rude back with you guys. I just tried to explain to you. And I don't know everything. I don't think anybody knows everything. You know, this channel isn't just for you to learn. It's for me to learn. And for all of us to figure things out together. I'm absolutely no genius. So don't think I am. I have to look up a lot of things. Anyhow, the point to this is I believe in free speech. I'm in Canada. Uh, we don't have free speech the way they do in the States. We do have free speech. But we could use a little bit more. Anyhow, I appreciate all comments. Even when you're roasting me, there's pretty much nothing that I won't uh, leave there for others to see. Uh, I'm, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at you at all. I don't even remember who you guys were. I notice uh, there are names that I haven't seen before. So don't worry about commenting now. But if you're going to take the time to roast me, at least take the time to uh, post a positive comment. Or anything, you know, uh, basically, I just wish you guys would have left your comments up. I didn't delete them. I wish you didn't delete them. I put a lot of effort into the replies and other people could have learned uh, from your comments and from my replies. Like I said, not everybody knows everything. Obviously, I don't because I just put this transmission in without a dipstick stop. And I've rebuilt transmissions before. Anyhow, she's my first 2005. Like I said, live and learn. I'm going to take it for a test drive right now. I will probably post a comment down below and let you know how it went. Uh, maybe not, because I'm not really in the mood to get on the highway tonight and get her up through all the gears. As we come into focus, you can see this is the wrong time for a test drive. Yeah, I'm going to have to go home and run it through all the gears another day. Anyhow, there's fun stuff coming soon. I really hope I've got things planned, but I also have my priorities straight. Anyhow, comment, rate, subscribe, and when I say comment, I mean go down below and tell me what an idiot I am, or if you learned something, or whatever. Anyhow, comment, rate, subscribe, share the damn video, don't do anything I wouldn't do, and stay tuned for the next one. Villains, I say to you now, knock off all that evil!